River Room that way. That's the sign to the new addition, but that's the teaser. You have to wait to get there. First, we're going to start off in the older parts of the library for our tour. I tried to do this in one take so that you could kind of get an idea of where you were spatially in the building. It's going to make the tour longer, but I think you'll get a better sense of where we are in the building. So if that's okay with you, let's do it. Ah, synonymous with spring, leaf blowers and what have you. But we're just going to sneak inside real quick, make that quieter. Welcome to the Kohler Library. I'm just going to shut the door behind me here. You just came in the main entrance. It's always been the main entrance and will continue to be so. Let's head into the community room first, shall we? Two things as we go on our march through. No laughing at projects that are half finished because when we closed down, uh, we were in the middle of moving into the new addition and then, you know, everything stopped and it's kind of been in, in a time warp, time capsule. So we're not done. So please forgive some of the mess going on. And two, I don't have a cameraman. So hang in there on this seasick journey. We are now in the community room. Great room for all sorts of activities and programs. And if you look behind me, the window was not originally here. That was part of the Friends of the Library renovation of this room about five years ago. Also, if you look behind me here, those doors, that is the entrance to the Sullivan Room, and of course, when the library was first built, the Sullivan Room was not here. That was just a window. And if you look behind me, the kitchen has been renovated along with the rest of this room and gorgeous cupboards, etc. Friends of the library were in charge of that project. So now we're going to come down this way to the Sullivan Room entrance, and this is the first edition. It was added to the library as a meeting room with a great big table there and you can see down at the end a very nice fireplace. It used to be real wood but now it's a gas insert which works perfect. The friends, uh, no sorry, Mahjong gals use it every week. Nice room, lots of groups use this for um, lions meetings, lioness, Mahjong as I mentioned, all sorts of lakes associations and things like that. Now we're back in the community room. If you look behind me, that door is to a hallway which has a water fountain and then the original bathrooms to the library. And I say water fountain, okay? I don't know what this deal is about Wisconsinites saying bubbler. We're back in the entrance, breezeway. Now we're going to head into the main part of the original library. Right over the threshold. And if you look over here, we have Janelle's office. I guess I could have turned the light on, huh? And then the circulation desk. The circulation desk has gone through metamorphosis too, as we never had electricity on it when the library first opened. Who knew you'd have to scan barcodes and things like that? If you look down here, that's that hallway to the bathrooms and water fountain. We are in the main part of the library, the original part of the library. And if you look over here behind the circulation desk in that glass, behind the glass um, <clears throat> windows, hello, that's my desk now and the workstation, but that used to be the kids section. That room was the entire kids section until the 1996-1997 addition was put on. Then the kids section got moved over here and is now larger because there was an additional space that way yet that we'll see for more of the regular fiction and nonfiction. Also over here, just a nice sitting area. I have a project going on there right now and a bay window that we were able to keep with this 2019-2020 uh, edition. We were going to lose that window at one point in the planning process, but we got to keep it, which is nice. See the clock behind me? That wall that the clock is on is the original back wall of the library, as it was in 1986, 87, 88, as they were planning and building. Then Sullivan Room, first edition, and then this section right past this wall here was the second edition. They put in 
window and more shelving space, of course, and everything up to those doors right there and that wall, that's the second edition. We are in the second edition right now. And now, what you have been waiting for, a tour of the new stuff. Here we go. Ready? Right this way. So the main room, the big room behind me, I'm calling it the Great Hall, but I have to stop calling it that. That's a Harry Potter reference. It is actually the River Room. We are now in the River Room. And we're going to have the computers, the public use computers in here, but those were being set up when we got shut down. Uh, there's a new handicap accessible bathroom over here, which is very nice. And then we have two kind of office areas where people can do work from home at the library and we had called for that before this whole pandemic and i think now afterwards now that people know how much they can do from home these spaces are going to be really nice so you can have a conference call or do a zoom conference call and shut the door and not bother other people that's going to be super nice across the way and there are two of those rooms across the way we have kind of a medium sized room and I am oh, in the process of organizing in here. But this is going to be nice for small meetings of four or six people, but also for digitizing because people are doing digitizing their old home movies and records and things like that. So we have that kind of getting set up in here. Let's go back out. Then Janelle and I really thought there should be some reading nooks where you can hang out and have a little corner to yourself. And unfortunately, these are not done yet. We don't have the furniture for these situated yet because things happened. But that's going to be one nook. Currently, there's a cot in there. That's cozy. <laughs> I've been using that in random videos. And then this is going to be quote unquote Janelle's reading nook. I think she's calling it Powell Marsh. Yes, mine is the ephemeral pond. She has a puzzle table and I forget what other things she's having. I'm gonna have a couple of recliners hopefully because I think there ought to be some. Kick your feet up and read a book. Okay, let's go into the second section of the new edition because our new edition is kind of like a an l shape but not an l shape that really connects it's kind of hard to explain all right we're back into the main part of the library and this is the second edition right here that we're in and we're walking into the second part of the third edition this is kind of a breezeway where we're going to have maybe an ongoing book sale shelf and then here's something we're all very excited about it's called indoor storage oh yeah when this library was built there was like one closet worth of storage okay two technically but you got to have your cleaning supplies somewhere so that takes up one right away indoor storage nice concept really nice and again we're still kind of in the process of setting that up. Then over here, just across the hall, is kind of a little office area where stuff like historical society stuff can go and other organizations, um, a women's group that's going to replace the Lions or the Friends of the Library can have stuff in here, etc. This really is a work in progress. Janelle's been, whew, she's been going through you know, 30 plus years of stuff in her office and trying to sort it out and put some of it into this area. So that's going on. It will be continuously going on. Now, the last spot we have to take a look at is the internet cafe. And this has turned out to be a godsend. This is where we have been having our curbside pickup. And that door is down here. We have a door that we can shut because once it does become the internet cafe, we'll lock up the library portion and then people can just get into that section in there. 
we're gonna have some nice chairs in here and the Wi-Fi is on 24 hours a day. So instead of sitting in your car when it's 20 below, so many people use our Wi-Fi from the parking lot, you can come in here and be warm. And so there's a counter and outlets and a key card system that we're eventually going to be employing. But right now on the counter, I don't know if you can tell, there's some items for people to pick up and that's where we're having our curbside pickup service. It's open to the outside. People can get in this far, get their stuff, and then leave and not have to interact with anybody in close quarters. So there you go. What do you think? Was it worth the wait? That's your grand tour of the whole entire library as it stands today. I'm going to finish up our tour of the library next to the picture of Frank and Betty Kohler because, of course, without them, we would not have this amazing library. Don't we have an awesome library? We do. And they've done everything in the name of their son, Frank B. Kohler, and it's the Frank B. Kohler Memorial Library, their one and only son. They lost him way too early. And they did everything in the name of him in our community, neighboring communities, not just this library. Great people. And they have continued even beyond the grave, if you will, to support this library and a lot of other organizations, which is incredible. Thank you very much for going with me on this historical tour. I appreciate it. You are caught up to the present now with this walkthrough that we did today. And if you've been a contributor in any way to our library, patron, a volunteer, financial contributor, you are a part of this library's history as well. So without you, thank you very much. We are finally at the end of our historical odyssey, but I have one more bonus for you if you want to hang in there with me for just like another minute or two. It's kind of cool. Okay, 1987. Frank Kohler took two panning shots with his camera of two different rooms in the library, the main part and then here in the community room. Then at the ribbon cutting for the second edition, Jim Robinson did another kind of panning shot, but from a different angle. Where is she going with this? I know you're saying, but what I did is I put my camera, tried to, right where they had their cameras, and I did a panning shot now as the library is today. And then I put those two together, old and new, to run them together so we could compare and contrast. I didn't know if it would work, but it kind of did. It's pretty cool. Do you want to see? This part is best watched in full screen because there's a lot of detail. We're going to start with Frank's video from the library dedication. The top is 1987 and the bottom is 2020. So right off the bat, check out that computer in Janelle's office. It's ancient. And that soap dispenser, by the way, yeah, we had that till about two years ago. This is pretty much the same. The desk is a little bit different because we had to add a section and some power. Now look down the length of the library. See that window? It's gone. We've had two additions that direction since the window. Now this is, we lost that back door back there in the corner. And of course we have a lot more shelving. Look at all this DVD shelving. Wow. And then down the hall with the water fountain, that's the same water fountain. And by the way, on the top there, that table and chairs you can just see on the edge, we still have that from 1987, a little new upholstery, but. Okay, now we're doing the community room. The top is 1987 again, the bottom's 2020. So this is panning left to right. The wall color's different. The wainscoting's the same. The door to the hallway, of course, is the same. And those two doors. Now, look down the length of the room here. No window on the top. On the bottom, nice large window. That's a great seating area now. The Friends of the Library did that about five years ago when they redid this room. Panning a little bit further over. And Frank does a shot up towards the ceiling of the original ceiling fan from 1987. That is now a digital projector on the bottom there, as you can see from 2020. Works really well for audio visual stuff. Panning further over now on the top, 1987, see the window. And on the bottom, of course, a year later, that got turned into doorway because it's the entrance to the Sullivan room. Continuing on, this window is the same. And then I'm sorry my shot of the kitchen's really wonky, but you can see how different the kitchen is now with the dark cupboards and the stove is gone. So that's all been replaced. Then we're going to go to Jim Robinson's video from the ribbon cutting from the second edition from 1997. 
and he does a library, main library shot. The top is 97, the bottom is 2020 again. He starts in the kids section because that was in a new spot in 1997. Looking down the length, the top there, you can just make out the ribbon for the uh, new edition, the second edition. And then on the bottom, it's those double doors that leads to the new, new edition. And this part's pretty much the same. Look at all those card catalogs. Oh, those are gone. Now this, I didn't notice until one of my last times through. Look at the stained glass in the window. That loon stained glass is still there on the bottom, 2020. And then this is pretty much the same, except we have a lot more shelving. And then behind the desk on the top from 1997, it's Pauline and Janelle. Aw. What do you think? That was kind of cool, wasn't it? I surprised myself. It worked out well. I am so glad Frank and Jim had the thoughts to do those panning shots. And I really wish I had thought to do that before the third edition started. Too late. I really should do it like once a year from now on though. Mm, I gotta put that on my calendar. More history is always in the making. And hopefully our history will include opening the library up to you, the patrons, pretty darn quick. Until then, you, Take care.